My name is Stanislav and today I have a gift for you. I present Stable Houdini. This is a toolset for working with Stable Diffusion from Houdini, which I have been developing for the last four months for EVR systems. We use it for real projects for all sorts of generative neural things, if you are interested in this, then all the links are in the description. But the most important thing is that EVR systems, my employers allowed me to distribute this set of assets absolutely free of charge. I think it's very cool. If you don't know what stable diffusion is, then it is a neural network for generating images from a text prompt and you can generate images on your local computer. For this you need an NVIDIA video card with at least 6 GB of VRAM. The main feature of Stable Houdini is that it works together with Automatic 1111 which is pretty much the standard web UI for Stable Diffusion. My set of Houdini assets support all the main features of Automatic. There will be ControlNet and everything else. The first thing you will need to do is install Automatic 1111. I won't dwell on this for long because there is already a lot of information about this on the net. To install Automatic you will need at least 100 gigabytes of free space, or even more when using ControlNet, because the checkpoints will take up quite a lot of space. And it is highly desirable to install it on an SSD. So you've set up Automatic. You have a lot of files on the disk. You need to find the BAT file or SH file depending on which operating system you are using. And you need a bat file called web UI user. Here you will need to put one key. Open this file with notepad. It will look like this. The most important thing is command line args. And here you need to put the following keys. API. This is a very important key without which all Houdini assets will not work. Well, also, theme equals dark. This is also very important to save your eyes. And when you've done that, Double click on user UI, and you'll start automatic with the arguments you specify. It may take some time, you just have to be patient. And when you have such an inscription, it means that your server has started, and you can run automatic directly in your browser. To do this, you need to copy this line 127.0.0.1.7860 is the port. Depending on which web servers you are already running, it may change. If you have automatic starting like this, then everything is in order. A web interface has appeared. Let's write a photo of a cat in the prompt and run our generation to make sure everything works. You can see the generation progress in the console. By the way, this is an important point. Look at the console often. When you first use some features, it may start downloading models that can weigh gigabyte or something, and it just takes a while. And the progress of this download will be shown in the console. The automatic is running and now let's move on to Houdini. To download my assets, you need to follow the GitHub link in the description. You can use Git to clone assets, this way you can update them anytime. Or you can just click here and download the archive with all the assets and the demo project. Let's create a new project now. Select Assets, Install Asset Library. In the DAW folder we will find the assets. First let's install top underscore stable underscore diffusion, image underscore preview, image underscore process. This is enough for us to start. Press Install. Stable Houdini operates at Top Network, or PDG. So let's create a Top Network here and dive inside. To begin with, I suggest changing total slots to custom slot count in the local scheduler and putting one here. Since we are working with our locally installed server, we cannot parallelize tasks. That's why let's make one thread and use one slot. When we installed the assets, we got a folder called Stable Diffusion. And here we have all the things we need. So the first asset we'll start with is the SD switch model. The switch model allows you to toggle a checkpoint that is currently used in automatic. If you have automatic running, then here you will see the current model. If you don't see it, click on these arrows here. And here you should see the current model that you have set in automatic. Automatic adds the name of the subfolder to the name of the model so if you downloaded my project and you have a different folder hierarchy, 
you will have an error here. Therefore, choose the model that you have. Let's try this model. Now it has not yet set in automatic. To run it, we need to run the top network, we need to cook this node. If I right click and select dirty and cook this node, we will see that the model is loading in the console, and as you can see, we are waiting for this model to load. As you can see, the model loaded. Let me choose the Dream Shaper model, I like it the most and will use that one. While it is being installed, I will tell you about other nodes. Each node in the toolset has a checkbox called Use Custom URL. This is a very important checkbox, which allows you to change the URL we are accessing, the address of your server. There may be a different port here, and secondly, you may configure it to use another address. If this is the case, then you can simply enable Use Custom URL and bind together these parameters for all nodes so that they all have the same address. The next node is called SD Dream. This is the main node. Here we have all the necessary stable diffusion settings. Additionally, in order to make it more convenient for us to work, let's put another node called Image Underscore Preview. This node allows you to preview the files that are in the current task in the Composite View window. Here you open the Composite View window, it is in this window that you will see our images. Let's go to SD Dream and understand its settings. The main settings are in the Stable Diffusion folder. These are the same Stable Diffusion settings that you should be familiar with if you've worked with Automatic. There is Seed here, you can put minus 1 there, so that for each new picture it will be absolutely random, or some specific seed. We have Resolution. We have Prompts, Positive and Negative Prompt. We have a Model, Sampler. CFG scale, number of steps, face restoration, tiling, everything we have in automatic. An important point about the use of the model. We have two options, current model, that is, the model that we are currently using in automatic. Here we have chosen a model, it will be used. Or we can set a specific model right here, but it is important to understand that when we have this node cooked, it will switch to this model if it different from the current one. And then, after it finished working, it would switch back again. This can take quite a long time. Therefore, I do not recommend to do so and still suggest using the SD switch model in order to switch models globally. So we have a prompt here, we have a negative prompt, we have the generation type set to text to image. Let's just make sure this works. That is why we put the image underscore preview node. Here we can press the cook button, and we will have all the nodes that are above cooked and we will get the result accordingly. And here on the Dream node we can choose a total number of batches. I have a 4090 card, I can put about 30 images here with a resolution of 512 by 512. Let's put 4 pictures first. This number depends on how much GPU memory you have. If your console starts to swear about the fact that there is not enough video memory, then reduce the number of batches. Let's cook it again and we will make sure that we really have four tasks appeared and in each task, as you can see, we will have its own image of a cat. We can switch between these tasks using these arrows on the image underscore preview node. Or additionally you can go here, choose type properties. Go to the interactive tools tab and here I have three tools, next, previous and save. And here you can assign a hotkey for the network pane. In order for these hotkeys to work, in this case, 6 and 7 switch tasks for me, the cursor must be above the network view. And at the same time, we must have the image underscore preview parameters window open somewhere. And additionally, the save button. For me it is bind to the zero key. It allows to save the current image to this folder. If I like something here, I can just click on save and save the current generation. Let's see what else we have on the SD Dream node. There is Hires Fix here, same as in Automatic 1111. Here we can choose Denoising. We can choose the available upscaler. Hires Fix works like this. We first generate a picture in a small resolution, then upscale it with a neural network and run it through image to image in order to add details. Here we can see that we can double the resolution and get a Hires image with Hires Fix. We are working with regular images in PNG format, and they are saved in this path.
Here we choose the base name of the file, while the extension can be omitted, it will still be PNG in the end. We save it to the current project folder slash generated and the name of the current node. An important point is that if you are using batches, then you need to enable the append name checkbox. In this case, a number will be added to the file name, a number of the current batch, it will be a batch multiplied by the number of tasks. Each file will have a unique name followed by a number. If you do not use batches, then you can basically turn off the append name and add here instead in backticks at pdg underscore index. This is just the number of the current iteration, the number of the current task, that is, 0, 1, 2, 3 in this case. But in order not to write all this every time, I prefer to just use the append name. And if you use batches, then only append name will help you. Let's talk about prompts. Here we have used prompt source, custom. That is, we used the prompt from this window. We have here a photo of a cat without any negative prompt. But we also have the opportunity to use prompts that come from the attributes from the task above. And for this we have a node called SD prompt. This node allows you to type in a prompt and write it to an attribute called prompt. Let's make the same story, move these nodes here. And here instead of prompt source custom, choose upstream attribute. Now we have the opportunity to generate these prompts higher in the network. The same cats were generated using prompts added in SD prompt. Since this is just an attribute, we can now do some pretty advanced stuff. For example, we can read these prompts from files. To do this, we have a node called CSV import. Let's put it first. Here we can select custom file and let's open such a file. Here I have a prompts.csv file. An ordinary text file in which we have a prompt in each line. And here we need to create a new attribute. Let's call it prompt. Thus, when we cook this node, we will see that we have three new tasks, and in the first task we have painting of a cat in the second photo and in the third illustration of a dog. Now we can plug in our SD prompt node, and for example write something like by Greg Rutkowski. And now, when we cook this node, we will see that we have these two prompts concatenated. That is, a painting of a cat, by Greg Rutkowski and so on. Here are these prompts and these ones have been concatenated. If you want to change the symbol they separated with, you can do so here. There is a comma here. You can remove it and recook it, and then we will just have a space. You can also add, for example, a negative prompt. Let's add the name neg prompt and write something like, blurry. In the stable diffusion node, we can make sure that here we have attributes called prompt and neg prompt. When we cook, we will see that we have both a neg prompt and a prompt. And they will be used in our generation. I got three tasks as the input, but at the same time, I had a batch size of four. It turned out 12 tasks at the output, and each one will have a unique image. Four pictures for the first, for the second, for the third. Thus, using all the features of Houdini to work with attributes, we can customize our prompts. But that's not all. Since we are working in Houdini, we now have the ability to animate almost any parameter that we have in our nodes. And the most important thing is that we can also animate prompts. Let's say I want to make some kind of animation using prompt, animation where we have a cat turning into a dog. To do this, we need, first, generate the required number of tasks. Add a generic generator node and enter the number of frames here. Cook 60 tasks. Next we put the SD prompt node. Here in the SD prompt node, in addition to the prompt, we have a tab called custom values and in this tab we can animate any parameter that will then be substituted into the prompt. First, we have here custom strings. For example, we can write here something like dog, cat and mouse. Here's a hint, use the at character and a number to replace it with the appropriate string. 
That is, if we want to write dog, we write at zero, that is, the first value. If we want a cat it's at one if we want a mouse it's at two. Thus, we can substitute some words inside our prompt. But we can change these words using expressions from Houdini. But apart from that, we have the ability to animate the float parameter. And just like that, let's do the morphing of a dog into a cat. Let's write a prompt, portrait painting of a cat or dog, trending on art station, center. The cat or dog entry will allow us to just morph from a cat to a dog. To do this, we will use a structure from automatic called prompt amplification. We can include some word or part of the prompt in parentheses and write the weight of this word through a colon. For example 0.5. Thus, the weight of this word will decrease. Or we can write, dog, 1.5, and the weight of this word will increase. These are the numbers that we can animate. To do this, we can basically use this value and somehow animate it. But I suggest another way. I suggest here in custom values to tick use ramp. This thing allows us to use the ramp and draw it however we want. We will have the range of the ramp from minimum to maximum change to this range. That is, for example, you can put minus 1.4 and 1.4 here and we will have minus 1.4 at the beginning of this ramp and 1.4 at the end. We usually take a number from 0 to 1 as input. We must put it here. This is normalized time. And since we are working with tasks, not frames, then here we need to divide the number of the current task by the total number of tasks minus 1. Then we will have a value from 0 to 1. We know that the number of the current task is at pdg underscore index. And the total number of tasks is written here in the item count parameter. Let's right click to select copy parameter. Here we will write a division sign, then right click and paste relative reference. Take it in brackets and subtract 1. Let's cook this node. Here in the first task we will have 0 here, in the last one there will be 1. And that number starts changing from 0 to 1. We have a hint here that in order to use this value, we must write down the hashtag character and the corresponding number. Or we can add hashtag and the exclamation mark and the corresponding number. To multiply this number by minus 1. That is, we can write here hashtag 0. And here we can write hashtag exclamation mark 0. Let's cook this node and make sure it works. At the beginning in the first frame minus 1.4 and 1.4. In the last frame 1.4 and minus 1.4. Let's add another SD prompt node for the negative prompt. Let's put a neg prompt. And here we just write blurry, out of focus. By the way, since we are working with automatic 1111, textual inversions, LORAS and hypernetworks will work as well. If you have any negative embeddings, you can also put them here. Let's add an SD Dream node in text 2 image mode. We use an upstream prompt and a particular seed. The resolution is 512 by 512. Let's choose the file name $OS and name the node dog underscore to underscore cat. Append name. Batch size of 1 is required. Now we can start the generation and wait a bit. And so, we got such a cool animation where a dog turns into a cat. As you understand, since we are working in Houdini, we can animate any parameter at all. For example, we can animate CFG scale or the number of steps. Or in image to image we can animate the denoising. In general, any parameter, including those parameters that could not be animated in automatic, are now completely under our control. The only thing, again, we're not animating with keyframes. We do not have a timeline as such, we can close it altogether. We animate with expressions. We need to use an expression like this at pdg underscore index divided by the total number of tasks in order to get a value between 0 and 1, and then multiply it by something. Now let's talk about image to image. We have generated an image. 
Let's say we have one image of a cat. What if we want to use image 2 image and process this cat image? We just put the same SD Dream node after the first node and switch the generation type from text 2 image to image 2 image. We got a new images tab, which has the same options as in the image 2 image tab of automatic 1111. Denoising strength, how much our original image will change. We have the source of the picture here. We can use a file on disk and, again, here we can use some kind of expression like a pdg underscore index in order to read a new picture in each task. Or we can just choose the upstream image. This means that the image that comes from here will be used. Here we have generated an image that will go here in the file attribute, and it will be used as the source image for the new generation. Let's try to regenerate the image. Illustration of a cat, anime style. We can select use upstream resolution here to use the resolution of the incoming image. Let's start generating. Now the first picture is generated and the second picture is generated. There was a photo of a cat, and we regenerated it into an illustration of a cat. Let's see the image to image settings. We have denoising strength here. It is possible to use a mask for in painting. You can choose where you get this mask from. You can invert the mask, this is a black and white picture. You can choose how this mask is filled, the default automatic settings. You can blur the mask a little here and also turn on full residential and add padding. Again, these are all standard automatic settings. Additionally, there is an opportunity to access a script called Image to Image Alternative Test, which allows you to process an incoming image in order to change its style. A very useful thing if you want to achieve some consistency from frame to frame. Let's say you want to process a video using a neural network. This is pretty easy to do because we have a node called file pattern. It can read files from disk in large sequences. I have a sequence of Rick Astley dancing. I'll select a file here, and instead of the frame number, I'll just put an asterisk. When I cook node, Multiple tasks will appear here, and each task will have a separate file. This file can directly come to my SD Dream node. Let's select Image 2 image now. Denoising strength should be low, set to 0.15. Let's choose Upstream Image Resolution. And most importantly, we must describe what we want to see. Let's write drawing of a dancing man, anime style, line art, flat colors, minimalistic. In the negative prompt add blurry, out of focus. But the most important thing is that we have a non-random seed. Some specific seed. If it is random, then our result will change every frame. So let's select the sequence folder. $OS. This is the name of the current node. And it will be called Rick. Let's first put a node called Filter by Range, so that we don't have to render all the frames. And here we will select Filter Item Index, and put from 0 to 5. And when we cook the node, the first 6 tasks will remain here, from 0 to 5. Let's put the image underscore preview right away. It turned out as such a stylized animation. As the input we have these shots, a slightly blurry video. And at the output we get this animation. If we remove the filter by range here, and cook all frames, then we will get a more or less pretty stylized animation. Thus, using the file pattern node, we can process any sequences in bulk. These sequences can go beyond image to image. They can pass, for example, into a mask. We can also choose here mask type upstream image. We can, for example, select a specific file in the image type, or even a sequence, we always have the option to add the frame number in the expression. We can select a mask through an upstream image and thus do quite complex animations on some existing sequence. If you are familiar with neural networks, then you have probably heard the word deform. This is a script for animating various parameters, you can get complex interesting animations with it.
The main feature of this script is that you can place the result of your generation as the initial image for the next frame. And we can also do this with for each loop with feedback. The top network has for each loop with feedback nodes that allow you to go frame by frame and transfer the picture from end to beginning each frame. To do this, we need to generate an initial image. Let's put the SD Dream node in here. Instead of using a custom prompt, I will use the upstream attribute. I will use SD prompt because I will be using it in several nodes. I have this prompt, just some kind of graffiti. Additionally, I will put one more SD prompt node for the negative prompt. The picture will be 512 by 512 pixels. Here we put the initial seed and let's generate it to a separate folder, which we will call temp. This will be the initial generation, initial feedback. The initial picture after which we will have generation in a feedback loop. So here you can switch off a pen name. Let's generate a picture and see what we get. Well, here's some graffiti. In the feedback loop begin node, you must choose the number of iterations, this is essentially the number of frames. Let's do 60. An important point is copy input files for first iteration so that the source file goes here only in the first iteration. And it went through all the other iterations from end to beginning. Now we can put our SD dream inside the loop. We want our seed to be different each frame. We can write minus one, in which case it will change every iteration. Or you can use a variable called Lupiter, the number of the current operation. For example, 500 plus at Lupiter. And in this case, we will always have 500 in the first frame, then 501, and so on. This is very useful when you are working on an animation and want it to be consistent. You don't want something random to be generated every time. In the same way, choose upstream for prompt. And of course we use image to image. We want to refine the image that comes to the input, and here we will have a low denoising, like 0.25. We use an upstream image. The rest can be left as default. And now we want to change this image, for example, zoom it a little or rotate, or do something else to make the next image in our generation slightly different. And for this I have a node called image process. This is image processing using the COP network. It takes the image that comes in, changes it using the COP network, and spits it back out. Temp file index, here we can use at Lupiter, this is the suffix for the saved file so that the files do not overwrite each other. And here we can, for example, blow up contrast. And actually it's not a bad idea, because the images can get a little blurry during regeneration. Again, we can raise the saturation a little, we can make it a little brighter. Here are standard color settings like hue shift, contrast, saturation, value. We can zoom in the picture a bit, put 1.02 here. Here we can also make the picture sharper. So that each time you zoom in, the picture becomes sharper. And in noise tab we can add noise to the picture, so that stable diffusion has something to work with. We can choose alligator noise and specify at Lupiter as the seed. And the frequency should be like 80 by 80. The ROP fetch node, when using in process, unlocks an asset it works with. So the image process node will be unlocked in the course of work. This is how Houdini works. Let's choose the correct file name. Instead of temp we will make it $OS and we will call it feedback. Here, of course, you need to write at Lupiter so that each time the iteration number will be substituted as a suffix in the file name and $OS should also be put in backticks due to a known bug. When $OS and an underscore are consecutive, it is replaced with a slash. And here we have such a cool animation. At the end, a corner of the building appeared, but this is a matter of choosing the right seed.
and in this way you can make a complete analog of Deforum in Houdini. By the way, you can also animate prompts inside this loop. Only instead of at PDG underscore index you will need to use at Loopiter and at loop size, the total number of iterations. The next node I want to talk about is SD upscale. It will be useful not only for generation. The fact is that Automatic has the ability to increase the resolution of the image using neural networks. Of course you can use these upscalers not only with the images you've generated, but with the sequences on disk, you can literally upscale the video. Let me show you on the example of generation. We have a cat generation. The image is generated with a resolution of 512 by 512 pixels. Let's add a node called SD Upscale. It uses the basic settings found in the Extras tab in Automatic 1111. We have the ability to choose where we take the picture from. You can select a specific file or use Upstream file. You can choose an upscaler from those that are currently installed in Automatic. I recommend using Esrigan and Skunik. Swiner could be good too, sometimes it adds detail to additional photos, but sometimes it ruins the picture. Let's leave Esrigan, and here we can choose the scale factor, that is, how many times we scale our original image, and we can overwrite the output attribute, so that this enlarged file goes here. And here we can choose in which subfolder we will put our picture, by default we have a folder with this name in the folder the original file is located in and the upscaled file will be placed there. As you can see, we now have a picture 512 by 512 here, and here we have a picture 2048 by 2048. And as you can see, it not only enlarged the picture, but also processed it with neural network, adding a little detail. And now, since we have overwritten the output file, we can additionally add an SD Dream node here in image 2 image mode with low denoising. Here we naturally use the same prompt. It is like this by default, but it would be a good idea to to bind them or put the SD prompt node at the very beginning. So, we actually get our own analog of hires fix. We generate a low res image, scale it up and run it through image to image to add details. Finally, let's talk about ControlNet. ControlNet is one of the coolest and most interesting parts of Stable Diffusion which allows you to essentially control what will be your output. You can control the posture of the characters. You can control the camera angle. You can control the composition, color and, in general, a lot of things. If you don't have ControlNet installed yet, you will need to install it. Go to Automatic and Extensions, press this button and here look for an extension called ControlNet. I already have it installed. Find, press install, then go here and click on the apply and restart UI button. After your automatic reboots, you will have control net. It requires models, and models are not small. When you use a model for the first time, it starts downloading. But you can also download them manually. Here, in the extensions installed folder, find control net. You can click on the link to GitHub. There will be a description of ControlNet, and here is a link to ControlNet models. This is a link to Hugging Face. Models weigh approximately 20 gigabytes. You can go to the folder you need on the command line and write git lfs clone and paste this path up to tree slash main there, everything will be automatically downloaded. Or you can download one file at a time by clicking on the arrow here. If you use git, you will need approximately 40 gigabytes of disk space to download these models. In addition to models, the control net has so-called preprocessors, which will also be downloaded. But they are much smaller, there are some 200 megabytes, some may be 400. Control net appears in your text 2 image and image 2 image tabs. It looks like this. Here you can put your original image, which will control your generation. Here you select a preprocessor and a model. For this to work properly in Houdini, let's go to settings, select here control net on the left and be sure to check this checkbox, do not append detect map to output. And secondly, if you plan to use several control nets, then you need to put the right amount here. For example, here I have three. 
The next important point is updates. The developers of ControlNet have a bad habit to change something in the parameters in every update. They can add a new parameter, they can remove old parameters, they can change the ranges of some parameters. And at the same time, all third-party plugins naturally stop working. Therefore, if you encounter bugs, you can roll back to the previous version and write to me that something does not work in the new version. On the GitHub, I will always try to write in the readme the date of the version, on which I tested the operation of all assets. And in addition, a very important point is that ControlNet API doesn't work along with some extensions. Empirically, for example, it turned out that it is not friendly with the extension called LUL, with the regional prompter extension, with the prompt travel and two-shot extensions. Maybe it doesn't work with other extensions as well. If you are generating from Houdini, and you see that ControlNet starts to pour some strange errors into the console, and in these errors you can directly see addresses like extensions slash the name of your extension slash some file, that means that ControlNet doesn't like this extension. Therefore, you can simply go to automatic 11.11 in extensions installed folder and disable the corresponding extension with this checkbox. What is a preprocessor? What is a model? Let me quickly show you. We have this image, and we want to use this picture to generate a character in the same pose. Here we can choose some preprocessor, for example, depth, which will generate a depth map from this picture. Select enabled and allow preview. Here such a button will appear, click on it and the result of the preprocessor will appear in the second window. Now the neural network is processing this image and, as you can see, it generates a depth map from it. And there are a variety of preprocessors. The simplest canny that just generates line art, strokes with lines. We have a normal map generation here. Here there are standard tangent space. There is also Midas, which generates more like world space, but a strange one. There is Open Pose, which generates the character's skeleton. And then, using the right model, we can generate a new picture from this skeleton. If you are using the Open Pose preprocessor, choose the Open Pose model too. In this case, I choose version 1.1, Open Pose 1. Let's choose a prompt, woman dancing, photo, hyperrealistic. And if we press generate, then we will apply this pose to this generation. At first, the preprocessor is loaded, the model is loaded. It can take some time. And all right, this pose applied to a woman. Let's see how it works in Houdini. Here, for example, we loaded Rick. Let's work with him now. Only I will probably take filter by range and make it from zero to zero only the very first frame to work with. Let's add an image preview right away to see what we're working with. And here we are working with this frame. So, let's put the SD Dream node. It has a tab called Control Net and here you can add Control Net. An important point, we live in the magical world of open source, and all this works crookedly, I'm talking about the Control Net API. If you are working in image to image, you must specify exactly as many control nets here as you have specified in the automatic settings. If you have three control nets specified, you need to make three control nets here, even if you only use one. If you are working in text to image, you can only put one. I hope they'll fix this bug. Since we are working in text to image, we will leave only one control net. We check enable and here we can also select the preprocessor and model in the same way. In this case, we will select the open pose full preprocessor so that we have a skeleton along with a facial expression and fingers. As a model, we respectively use control 1.1 open pose. Now we need to put an adequate description here. And the more we make it, the more coherent our picture will be from frame to frame. And here I wrote this prompt, that we will have a picture of dancing Keanu Reeves, who is wearing a black suit with a tie, and a detailed face. It is also good to put a negative prompt. I'll put a standard negative prompt for any deviations from good anatomy. One batch, name $OS. 
before the final render it will be good to put hires fix. And now let's try to start this business with one picture. As you can see, we have Keanu Reeves. It was like this, it became like this. Here, perhaps, the posture of the hand has shifted a little, because indeed it's pretty blurry here and the preprocessor made a little mistake. We also need to describe the background on which our hero stands, so that it does not change from frame to frame. Let's add this. Yeah, that's a mistake, because it saw the word painting. Let's probably just leave dancing Keanu Reeves. Because it thinks it's a picture that needs to be framed. Well, here we have a sequence with dancing Keanu Reeves. Even the face is more or less adequately kept from the frame of the frame. The suit holds up well. Yes, the background does not hold well, but here you just need to play with the settings. I remind you that in text 2 image mode we can put one control net here, but in image 2 image we will need all of them. We can for example put image 2 image here to keep the original colors. And we will definitely put exactly as much control nets here as you have in the automatic settings. Let's try to see what it will be in image 2 image mode. Let's recook one picture. And now we have colors from the original image, and the clothes have also changed. With the help of control net, we can process the whole sequences. Naturally, the picture will drift a little from frame to frame but this can be overcome with programs like EBSynth that allow you to interpolate frames with video and the result can be quite stable. Let's now quickly set up our own little render engine using the control net. Look, I have a character here in the project, the most common character from Mixamo. It came with a rig, I put him in some pose. And let's say I want to use this character to render a depth map in the control net and thus pose the characters that are being generated. The map can be calculated in a variety of ways, for example, you can render it in Mantra or Redshift, but I made a special asset that does this very quickly. Install it, it's called Depth Map. This is an obj level asset. So we can put it here. It has very few options. Here you must select a camera, just don't make a relative path, leave it as it is. And we need to select our object, our character. A black and white mask appeared. In essence, this asset colors the points as they move away from the camera, by projecting them onto the camera plane and colors the points just like the render engine does. We have here the option to invert the color. In principle, this is correct if the color encodes the distance from the camera. But in fact, for the control net, we need such a map, where white indicates places closer to the camera. And also we have a power parameter to highlight details. Because the control net isn't really watching on absolute values of your map, it looks at the difference between neighboring pixels. Therefore, to capture more details, you can play with power. Here we specify the save path. It's important to save it as JPEG because the control net doesn't play well with the alpha channel. If you have alpha in your depth map, then artifacts may appear. So just save it as JPEG. If I press render, then instantly I will have a depth map on disk. This is done really fast because this is done through the OpenGL node. Let's first use the file pattern node to find our previous depth map and delete it, because the ROPFetch node does not know how to do this. Let's find the file. No match behavior, create work item. Let's add file remove. Select the upstream node accordingly, select ignore errors. If we cook these two nodes, then we will make sure that file is gone on our disk, and if we cook them again, there won't be any errors. Now let's render our depth map from scratch for this we will put a node called ROP fetch. It can trigger any ROP nodes. Let's choose a ROP node, we have to choose the ROP node, which lies inside the asset, inside ROPnet. 
select OpenGL. This will allow the ROP fetch node to store the result of the work in a file attribute. This way we can use it as an upstream file. Choose cook type, in process. When we cook this node, we will again get our depth map on the disk. Let's add SD Dream. Let's say I want something like comic book illustration of a man wearing a suit, neutral black background. And let's also add a standard negative prompt for the characters. We can use upstream image resolution so that we use the resolution of the file that we got as input. This is our mask. $OS in the file name, this will be depth based. And choose our control net. Because it's text to image, we can only add one of them. Since we have already calculated the depth mask, we do not choose a preprocessor here, but simply put the depth model right away. Let's add image underscore preview and see what we get. And as you can see here's our original frame, here's the frame we ended up with. Here you can apply hires fix to make the resolution higher. Let's check that it works in different camera angles. Everything is fine. This way I can put the character in any pose and thanks to control net I can get the corresponding illustration. Everyone constantly complains that neural networks can't do hands. No, everything is in order if you use control net. So, this is my toolset. I worked on it for a long time, it has hundreds of lines of Python code. If you have any bug reports or feature requests, if you want to add or change something, then welcome to GitHub. There is an issues tab, where you can write all this, and I will refine the assets. And in the comments there will be a link to donation service, where you can thank me, if you wish. If something remains unclear, if you have any ideas, any questions, write in the comments, I will be glad to discuss neural networks with you. Cheers.